we are going to get started in just a few minutes, y'all. I'm just getting all of our supplies set out. Um, let's see who's here. Let's see if I can manage to not smack the tripod. Louisville, India, oh my gosh, you are probably our furthest away viewer. Hello and welcome. Uh oh, let's see, somebody loves Frida. I hope you love Frida as much as I do. I love her to death. She is fantastic. Princeton, Plano. While we're um, while we're waiting for everybody to join in, um, I wanted to show y'all some of my supplies because I had a lot of people ask uh, what supplies I'm using. So um, I'm not endorsing any products. I can just show you some of the things that I picked up um, by whichever brand you want. It doesn't matter. Um, I mean, it matters a little bit, but buy whatever you want. <laughs> um, one of my very favorite supplies is this little guy um, and this is an eraser um, and it's all gummy it kind of feels like like modeling clay or play-doh I think it's like a dollar fifty and you can get it at any art supply store and it works so much better than a regular eraser when you are putting down your sketches um, it's wonderful you just kind of smack it onto the paper and it pulls um, pencils uh, I've actually used it to try to pull up paint before it works a little bit um, but you can kind of mold it however you want and it's fantastic it's like a dollar fifty wonderful purchase um, the paint brushes that I use most everything I do I can do with um, two sizes this is a size six um, round and this is a size two round um, so if you were gonna buy paint brushes that's what I would recommend you don't have to. I'll show you guys um, in just a little bit how to how to fix even a brush that's not that great. But if you wanted to spend money on brushes, I would get a size six and a size two. Um, what else? The pencils that I use. Um, a lot of people have asked. I I got these at the grocery store like years and years ago, so they're not they're not expensive. They're um, they're, yeah, I mean, like they're they're in the children's art supplies. They're not they're not a, a big deal at all, but they work great. Um, let's see the the supplies that you need. Um, somebody's asking. So that this is this. I use the same thing for every single class. I'm going to use um, watercolors. I'll show you. I have I have a bunch of different kinds of watercolors, but for this class, I use this travel set because I feel like it's the closest to what you can find at like the grocery store. Um, I mean, it's not, it's a, it's a little bit of a higher brand, but you know, it's, it's dry paint. I'll show you how to get it wet and use it. The colors are really basic. Um, if you wanted to spend money on paint, you totally can. I got these at, um, I got it just a regular art supply store. Um, so you could get this kind of palette anywhere, um, if you wanted. Um, what else? Crayons, I use, um, I mean, crayons. <laughs> so that, and, and actually I use these quite a bit for drawing because they're great for shading. Um, markers. These, these were like the store brand. They have um, a fat tip and a smaller tip. So again, like, I don't think these were more than $5 and they, it was a set. Um, I have some that are a little bit fancier. I got them at a craft supply store. And um, again, like I bought the set, it comes in a bunch of different colors. I think I got these for scrapbooking actually. My whole goal with this class, um, is to use stuff that I'm hoping you guys have at home. That's why, I, so I teach it in painting and in drawing so that whatever you've got, you can use that. 
uh, because I don't want you guys to feel like you have to run out. I don't want you to feel like you have to spend a lot of money. This is a class to just teach you what to do with what you've got. Um, so if you have um, something that I'm not using, please let me know. Um, and I will try to make accommodations or kind of talk you through how to use it. Um, the main difference that you're going to see if you're using like acrylic paints instead of watercolor, with watercolor, generally speaking, uh, you, you, you leave white space where you want to have white space rather than adding white paint. Um, you'll see like this travel set, it does have white and you can also tell I've never used it. Uh, with, you certainly can use um, white paints with your watercolor, but you don't have to. Um, so with acrylics or with oil, you can add white. Uh, with watercolor, you don't. You just leave a blank space and that's where you get your white from. That's the main difference. Um, so yeah, I think we're about ready to get started. Okay, so my announcements, oh, and uh, paper. So I use, I use watercolor paper. Uh, for this class and then for when I'm showing you guys drawing, let's see what I'm using there. This is like plain old craft paper, um, mixed media sketchbook. When I'm doing our drawing portions, that's what I use. Um, watercolor paper, again, you don't have to use it. If you plan to do a lot of watercoloring, I'd recommend it because it holds water better and it holds your paints better and it won't buckle as much. Um, so this one is, uh, if you wanna get real specific, it's 140 pounds cold press. Um, what does that mean? Doesn't matter. It's just, it's watercolor paper. Um, it's thick and it has a bumpy side and a smooth side. If you are going to uh, paint with it, paint on the bumpy side. Um, it's not terrible if you mess up and, and start using the smooth side instead. It doesn't matter. It's just that this, this will hold your paint better. Um, basically, if you are just beginning in art, I would, um, I would just not, like, don't spend a lot of money because you're going to find that you are more fulfilled if you haven't invested, like, a ton of money and you feel like you have to really super accomplish, like, the best artwork ever. I just want you to have fun. So use what you've got and, um, and we'll make it work. Um, let's see, oh, Pamela, you did end up using the nail polish. Please, uh, please send me that, the picture of using the nail polish because um, that's awesome. She used nail polish to put white caps on the waves that we made last week. Okay, um, when you wanna send me your art, please send it to here. This is my email address. I do wanna see what you're doing. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, quick announcements. Um, we do this class every Monday online um, at Plano Arts on Facebook. The video will be posted um, after the class is over. It'll go back up on our Facebook page and it'll live there forever. Um, it'll also be on our Instagram page after the class is over and our Instagram is at Plano Arts. Um, so today we're doing a hummingbird. Where is next week's painting? Here is next week's painting. We are doing blueberries. Uh, so that's for next week at noon. Um, let's see, I do have these planned uh, throughout the summer. So every Monday at noon, I will see you here online. Um, every Tuesday and Wednesday, we do a local artist spotlight. Those are so interesting. I highly encourage you to check them out. They will be posted every Monday, I'm sorry, every Tuesday and Wednesday at noon. Um, everything's at noon. So if you get confused, just go to our page at noon. Um, Thursday is a student virtual um, art exhibit. Um, and if you wanna be a part of it, send an email right here. Um, I just need your art, and just one picture. Um, you can be in the photo or not, doesn't matter. Um, it's totally your preference. Uh, the student's first name and the student's school and their grade. If you are not comfortable giving me their school or their grade, that is okay. Um, I asked for it because I tagged the schools um, and a lot of them want to see what their students are doing and then they share it, which is really nice. They congratulate the student. So um, let's see, hey, Pam has a recommendation. Yeah, Pam, I agree with you about, um, I'm, I'm looking at our messages. She's saying that there are particular supplies that have frustrated her and I agree, um, but, 
Um, <laughs> this is a government page, so I cannot endorse any products. Um, if you and I want to sit down and have a, a talk about what you think works for you and what doesn't, we can totally do that. Um, I just cannot do it while I'm representing the government. Um, okay, so that is, okay, so then Thursday, student virtual art exhibit, please send in your stuff. I really want to um, keep that. I want to give kids a platform for, um, for creating. So please do send your students artwork. It's been going so well. I'm so impressed with all the kids. Um, you do not have to live in Plano to be part of the exhibit. You just have to be a student artist. Um, and that is up to you. Ages, I, I, you know, whatever you think. Um, send in your work. I want to include it. I want to highlight what you've done. Um, and those of you who are not students but are just taking these classes, please send me your work. I really want to see what you're doing. Um, first of all, it makes me so happy to see what you have created. And um, second of all, it also helps me figure out if there's something that I could explain better um, or that I'm explaining well. Like it helps me see how, it, how it's all working out. So please do send it and it just, it makes me happy to see it. So um, it's, it's always nice to share your art. So do it if you can. Um, every Friday we have a free concert online um, and it is live and you can send in your, um, your requests. Uh, this Friday is a man named Terry V. He does country and blues and rock. Saturday, we will have um, a concert from the Powell Brothers with the Barons as our opener. And again, all of that is at noon. So um, join us online. Okay, we are ready to start creating. Um, we're ready, so I need you guys to make a promise. I feel like I say this all the time, but <laughs> I'm going to say it again because I want you to hear it. Today art class, all of these art classes, all of creating is about enjoying creating art. It's not, whatever I create today is not going to look just like this. Whatever you create today is not going to look just like this. And it shouldn't. It's your art. It's individual. This is just about learning maybe some techniques, having a good time, creating something beautiful. Um, I want you to agree not to beat yourself up. Not to get frustrated if it's not going exactly how you planned, especially if you're doing watercolor. Watercolor has a mind of its own. It does its own thing. Um, so give me a thumbs up or give me a heart if you agree that you're just going to have fun. Do not compare yourself. Do not get frustrated. Just keep going. Um, oh, Pam, you notice my nail polish? <laughs> Pam is commenting on my nail polish. Yes, I am trying every week to theme my nail polish to our artwork. Um, <laughs> because you guys have to look at my hands, so I'm trying to make them pretty. <laughs> um, okay, so everybody's ready. So, all right, I'm gonna push this little guy right over here. Um, and we are gonna do, so I'm gonna start out with a drawing today to help you see um, the shapes of what we're gonna do. Every time that I do a painting, and every time that I um, explain a painting, um, your son, let's see. Somebody says their sons are waiting and jumping at the same time. I totally understand. <laughs> I'm trying to get us there, I promise. Um, okay, so every time that I do a painting, um, and whenever I teach you guys a painting, I try to break it down into some basic shapes. If you break it down into some basic shapes, anything is doable, okay? Um, that's true of a lot of things in life, by the way. Um, whenever I'm lifting weights, I try to remember that. I'm like, you can just, just get through these three sets and then, and then you can move on. Um, so same thing. We're just going to break it down, do it a little bit at a time. Okay. So our shapes here, we have an oval for the body. We have a circle for the head. The wing is a rounded triangle another rounded triangle here. This is sort of like a bent rectangle. And here we have a really long triangle. I'm gonna draw it out for you guys so we can see. Um, if you want to draw along with me, just draw lightly uh, so that it doesn't interfere with your painting. Or if you're gonna be doing this as a drawing today, draw lightly because it's much easier to start out light and then build up color than it is to start out real dark and then you've got a bunch of lines, okay? So I'm gonna start with our little round head. 
If you have trouble making circles, there is no shame in picking up something that is circular sized and just tracing it, okay? You can totally do that. All right, so there's our little head. Let's do our oval body. Okay. I am doing this drawing darker than I normally would so that you guys can see it, okay? So if we think about, here's this little head. His wing is gonna start about right here. I'm gonna make it sort of a rounded triangle. Don't feel like you have to do this at the same time as me. You can watch first, okay? Yes, I can wait. Fatima, sorry about that. Okay, so we've got our circle. We've got our oval. I'm gonna start about right here, okay, for our triangle. There's one line of it. Wings, they're gonna be fatter in this part and then it tapers up, okay? So fatter right here, tapers in at the end, tapers in up there. So here we go with this triangle. It's gonna start out triangly shape, right? Fat. Okay, now I'm gonna start going in. I'm about a little more than halfway through. I'm gonna bring it in. Okay, I'm gonna do the one right behind it. So I'm imagining that it would start about that side. Here's the point. Rounding and coming in. Okay. I hear dogs barking down the street. Please excuse me if you hear animals. I'm trying so hard to keep it quiet in here. <laughs> I, have, um, I have a bunch of dogs and cats and birds that have all been rescued. It's not a crazy house, but it's, sometimes it's loud. Uh, but everybody is isolated. Um, I don't have that many. I have two dogs and, and um, some little kittens and two rescue birds. Okay, um, a rectangle for the tail. So here we go. It's like a rectangle, but you'll notice it comes out to a point. Um, and that is because this spot over here is further away, so it's going to seem smaller. So it's going to be at an angle like that. Okay, so here's this little line down. Okay, and then rectangle, so there's that side. And then we're just gonna connect it. So this bit is longer, this bit is shorter, and that makes it look like the tail is receding. Paula, I was being really quiet for a second. Can you hear me now? Okay. All right, so now that we have our base, oh, we need the beak, of course. Okay, so this is gonna be a very long, long, thin triangle. Um, it's gonna start, if this is the center of the head right here, it's gonna start right above the center. I'm just gonna draw this little line out and then you can draw the other one and just kind of make it a line. When you paint, it's gonna get thicker anyway. So really long triangle right there. Is everybody with me? If you can give me a thumbs up to let me know you're okay. Oh, the animals. Oh, good, okay. <laughs> Paula, I thought you couldn't hear me. Okay, great. Yes, my, my doggies are being really well behaved right now. They all got baths this weekend, so they're scared right now. <laughs> they're not happy with me. They're trying to be really quiet and go unnoticed so that they don't get more baths. Um, but they needed it. It was necessary. Okay. Um, we're good, looks like we're good. Okay, so we've got our basic shapes, right? Um, when you start painting them, you're gonna notice this isn't a circle right here, it kind of connects. So you want to connect that with like a little bit of a line. And then this one, this where his little throat would be, it's, it kind of curves inward, that's a line that curves inward. And that's basically it. So that is the shape of our little bird. I'll wait, I'll wait for you. Um, See somebody saying they're not ready. That's okay. So I'm going to, I'm gonna leave this right here. I'm gonna grab my watercolor paper. I'm gonna do the same sketch, but onto my watercolor paper, okay? If you were drawing and you um, want to move ahead, you totally can. I'm gonna come back and color this in. Um, look at the colors of the bird and you can start putting in um, some shading if you want to with the colors. So I will come back to that. 
Okay, so let me do, I'll put him right there. You can go right there. Ooh, almost lost him. Okay, I'm gonna do the same drawing right here on my paper. So I'm gonna do a little circle for the head, oval for the body. Wow, I made that really big. That's okay, I'll make his head bigger to make up for it. A wing, little wing, rectangle. Okay, that's pretty sloppy drawing, <laughs> but it's okay because I'm going to go over it with my paint. Okay, I'm going to set that aside. I'm sorry, there's only so much room here on the screen. How's that? Okay, so the very first thing that we're going to do is, I'm going to put that right there so you can see it. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, we're going to get our paintbrush ready. If you saw earlier, um, my paintbrush has this lovely tip right there. And you want that because you want to have um, the ability to do like some little fine lines. If your paintbrush is a mess, let me find my mess paintbrush. If your paintbrush is a mess like this, and he's all fluffy. It's okay, we can fix it. Ready? We're just gonna swirl him in the water. Okay, and take it with your fingers and pinch it into a point. There you go. Now he's all better. Um, if you want to prevent your paintbrushes from getting all fluffy, do not put them sitting in the water glass like that. Don't just leave them like that because then their nice little point gets all messed up. Um, same thing when you're rinsing your paint out of your brush. Don't push it down on the bottom of your cup and swirl um, because you will ruin the nice little point of your brush. Um, if it's ruined, it's fine because it's not ruined forever. You just need to fix it with your fingers, okay? So that's how you'll fix your little brush. You should not, oh, the yes, that's true. I made the outline dark so that I could paint over it so that you guys could see it. Um, when I use yellow, um, I usually use yellow, Gitu, uh, is it Gitu? I'm sorry, Gita. Um, I've used yellow before, uh, which is what I use normally when I'm drawing for me, um, but then you guys can't see it on camera. So um, I made it darker so you guys could see. So yes, um, definitely don't make your lines as dark as mine. If you do, try to use a little eraser. You can pull up um, some of that. All right, so now we're gonna get started. And uh, we have a few different colors here. You see we've got hot pink, we've got green, we've got blue, we've got, there we go, I'll put that right there. Um, hot pink, blue, green, we've got a little bit of purple, um, and we have a little bit of black for the eyeball. Um, what we're gonna do first is put down a really light bit of color uh, to start with for our base. And I'm going to start with this blue here. I'm going to get my brush wet. I'm just going to drop a little water on there. Okay, so with watercolor, you just need to use a little tiny bit of color and then spread it with uh, plain water to get the colors that you are wanting. Okay. I'm going to start right here on the belly with some blue. And now I'm going to wet my brush. I'm going to tap it off the sides so that I don't have a big drip of water. And I'm just going to use some water to spread this through my outline. I am not putting it right on his little throat um, because I'm gonna put the real bright ruby color there. And same with his beak, I'm just gonna leave that alone. And I'm just gonna spread. You will notice that the lines of my paper, 
on my paper are, um, are that it's sort of bleeding. That's because I'm using watercolor pencils. Um, and they turn into paint once they get wet. Okay, so there's my blue. Oh, we've got a joke. Why does a hummingbird hum? Because it does not know how to talk. That is adorable. Um, <laughs> I like that very much. I have some more jokes for you too. But you guys, if you have any uh, bird-related humor, please share it in the comments. Okay, um, we are going to put in the ruby throat next. Now, your colors, when you start putting them down because the paint is wet, they are going to um, bleed and bump into each other. Um, and that is good. That is watercolor, that's why you, that's what you want it to do. Okay, so here's a little bit of hot pink. And I'm gonna put it right on his little throat. And I'm gonna let it, I'm gonna rinse off my brush. And I'm gonna spread it out. Just using water now, there's only water on my brush. Ta-da! Okay, now, oh, oh, somebody's upset about something. What's wrong? Yes, absolutely, I can wait. Okay, so um, I just, yeah, so I just put in a little bit of ruby on his throat. And um, the back of his head, I'm going to drop in more green. Now remember guys, these are, these um, videos are online, so, um, and they will stay up there. So if you need to just watch first, you totally can. Somebody is sad, tell me why you're sad. I can slow down. Um, you might want to watch or you can follow along and paint at the same time. And you can also create a bunch of these. Um, okay. So I put some green on the tip of my brush and I'm just gonna touch the back of his head. I'm just touching it right back there. Okay, and then you can push it around. You might want to leave a little space for his eyeball, um, but also we can do that when it's dry. So right now we are just going to drop in our paint colors, okay? I'm going to let this green spread up his wing. Um, so these are your basic colors that you're putting in on your little bird. Um, and we will come in and we'll do details in a little bit. So these are your basic ones. Now here's the fun part because now you get to just kind of drop in colors wherever you want to. Um, with watercolor, um, you can kind of, you can build up your color and make it darker. If you have, um, I'm going to get him wet right here. I'm just going to get that kind of wet. And then you can drop colors in and they will spread. It's sort of a hard thing to get used to. Um, if you are used to creating art where you have a lot of control, watercolor, you don't have a lot of control over it. So you just kind of have to let go and embrace it. Okay, I have some hummingbird facts for you guys. I'm gonna get a little green here and put it on his back. And again, yours does not need to look just like mine. It can look however you want. And honestly, like whatever your paints are gonna do. I'm just kind of filling in. Okay, hummingbird facts. They are the smallest migrating birds and they don't flock like a lot of little birds. They typically travel alone for up to 500 miles at a time. I think it's pretty cool. Um, what else? Oh, their little eggs are the size of jelly beans. I think that's pretty cool. 
Um, okay, so I've got some basic colors here. And I'm going to now drop in probably like some purple just for fun. Maybe. What do I want to do? Yeah, a little purple. So while it's wet, I'm going to grab... Is this my purple or my blue? That's my blue. I'm just going to put some of that right there on the tail just to add a little interest. You do not have to do the same thing. I'm just doing it to see what it looks like. I'm going to go ahead and paint this back wing. I want it to pop out a little bit um, so that um, so you can tell the difference between the two wings. Someone's talking about, oh, Jenny, yes, the flamboyance. Um, so a flock of flamingos is a flamboyance. You were correct. I don't know what a flock of hummingbirds is. I never really thought about that. I guess because they don't flock. There might not be a word. If you guys know the word for a flock of hummingbirds, let me know. Okay, so I am just filling in a little purple back there for his back wing. And let's see. Okay, so, and I think I'm going to put a little blue on this front wing. So I'm going to just grab a little blue and I'm just going to put in a little bit and then I'm gonna spread it out with some water. Be careful, if you have colored your back wing, try not to touch it because they will blend together. Um, if that does happen, it's okay um, because you can always go back in and fix it when it's dry. Okay, so I just added a little color there. Okay, so now we have to wait a little bit for things to dry. Let's see, I think I need a little more green right there on his little face. So I'm gonna put that in and push it around with some water. Okay, Willa has joke time. What do you give a sick bird? Tweetment! Oh, I love that! That's a lovely joke. I like that one a lot. <laughs> um, oh, okay, another hummingbird fact for you while we're waiting for this to dry. Um, they do not have a sense of smell. They, um, they use color to see their food. Um, and let's see, but you should not put red dye in their food because that is dangerous to them. So um, try to use a feeder that has red or orange in it. Um, and that's how you will attract your little, your little birds. Um, okay, are we dry yet? Kinda. Okay, you'll see we've got these little marks here. Um, we just have to wait until our painting is a little dry to show where the feathers are. And then, let's see, I think we can go ahead and put in his little beak. Um, for the beak, you are going to want to use the tip of your brush, the very, very tip. If you have a smaller brush, um, the beak is an excellent time to use your smaller brush. I think most of you are using one brush, so I'm going to go ahead and use this one uh, so we're kind of doing the same thing. Okay, so I'm getting, let me show you, teeny, teeny, tiny bit of hot pink here on my brush. And um, you may find that in order to do lines and detail work, you want to turn your painting, and that is perfectly fine. I'm going to turn mine like this. And to get a nice fine line, you're going to hold your paintbrush straight up and down and move quickly because that will give you a thinner line. Okay, I'm not going to touch his face because mine is still a little bit wet. So I'm going to start my line right out from his face right here. Boom. And that's the top of my beak. 
They have, they're so tiny um, that although we talked about this being a triangle shape, do not feel like you have to make a giant triangle. You can actually just kind of start the triangle right there and stop. Can you see? Let me show you. Right here. That's really where my triangle kind of stops. So I'm just going to make a tiny little line to connect and fill it in. And that's his beak. And that's all that is. It's a really tiny, tiny, tiny fine line. Okay. So we have the basic colors here. And then over here, you'll notice the difference is we have all these nice little lines and we have an eyeball and we have feathers lined out. Okay. Right here, right here, right here. So I'm going to hope he's dry. You guys can always wait a little bit longer um, because I have you guys following along with me online. Don't want to have to make you wait. Oh, we'll do our drawing. Okay. In the meantime, let me do a little bit of drawing here. So here's our outline for our drawing, right? I want to show you what it would look like in crayon because I do like crayons very much. Okay, same shape. Remember we did a little circle for the head? Let me scoot it up a little bit. And an oval for the body. And then a rounded triangle for the wing. There's another one, that wing right there. And then there's the tail. Okay, so I would, if I was doing this with um, crayons, just put in some light shading there for the throat. And I would use this same color here to go ahead and draw out the beak. And then um, the hummingbirds are mostly green right here on the back of their little head. So I would start shading in with that. And again, if I wasn't doing this to be on camera, I would not have drawn those lines as dark. Um, but I am, and I want you guys to be able to see what we're doing, so that's how I'm going to do it. Oh, Paula, you can totally do whatever flowers and whatnot you want in the background. In fact, I have, I have done hummingbirds with the little flowers, um, so you can, you can totally do whatever you want. I don't want you guys to feel like you have to copy what I'm doing. You can do however you want it. Um, yeah, this is just your basic little hummingbird, so feel free to do whatever you want. I think they like little trumpet flowers, um, so you could do something like that. Okay. All right, so if you're doing crayons, that's about how you would do your shading, and then when you go in to do your detail work, again, you can use whatever colors you want, but you want to do some feather shapes, which are like for simplicity purposes, you can communicate with some lines, some long, thin lines to sort of show where your feathers are. Okay, so I'm going to pick this guy back up again. Okay, I'll leave him right here. Okay. So if you guys are not at this point yet, that is okay. Um, you can all, this, this, um, this tutorial is not going anywhere. It will be right here on, on Facebook and also on Instagram. Um, okay, so mine is pretty dry. Um, if yours is not dry yet, just hang on and you can follow along with me. Um, and I will show you, I'll show you what to do and you can always come back and do it. Okay, so I want to do little feather shapes. And those are going to be, let me see, I'm going to paint it right here. I'm going to show you on my page, like a little U. Because you don't have to draw the entire feather, you don't have to paint the entire feather, you just have to give the idea of the feather being there. 
I'm just going to do some little tiny U shapes right here at the belly. Okay, and so I did those um, in turquoise because that was the paint color that I had right there. I'm going to do some at his little ruby throat and I'm going to use the hot pink color. A little tiny use. And again, like you don't have to do the same number I'm doing. You don't have to do them where I'm doing them. It's just an idea. Okay. And I'm going to do the same thing right here at the tip. You'll see where I did like some green um, right there at the top of the wing and right there on his back. Thank you, Janet. I'm like glad you like the um, the crayons. I've always enjoyed using them. They are not the fanciest of things, but um, you know, art does not have to be fancy. Okay, so I'm just going to do a little tiny U right there where his shoulder starts, and a little bit out there on the wing. I'm going to do some right here on his little back. There you go. And these just give an idea um, of the feather. So don't feel like you have to do the entire feather. In fact, oh, I, I, sh I um, saved a feather to show you guys. So normally, if you see feathers out in nature, do not pick them up because they can carry germs. This is from my parakeet. Um, so you can see, even though it looks like a solid thing, it has these little, it's made of little tiny wispy lines. Um, and coming up, I think I have feathers in our plan for the next few months. So I will save this for when we do paint feathers, but kind of keep that in mind, these little wispies and this little rounded shape. So the, the shape that we're doing right here, the U, is this little round bit here on our feather. Okay, so to show some of these longer um, feathers that are in the wings, I'm gonna do some longer lines. I'm gonna use the purple. You do not have to use purple. You can use any color you want, but that's what I used. Um, and I think it'll show up nicely. So, okay, the feathers are gonna lay in this direction on the wing. So when you do your lines, do them in that direction. Here we go. And you'll see I'm, not, I'm just using the very tip of my brush. And I'm just showing an outline of where they would be. Oh, Fatima, you have parakeets too? I have a little yellow one and a blue one. They are so pretty. It's very funny. I rescued mine from the shelter and then parakeets just started showing up all over the place. <laughs> there were some that were lost in my neighborhood and showed up. Um, and so now I'm the parakeet rescue lady and I just kind of send them out to their new homes when I find them. Oh, you have two baby parakeets. Someone has, oh, they're so sweet. Don't you just love them? Okay, so here on the tail feathers, I'm gonna do the same thing. These feathers lay in this kind of up and down direction. So I'm just gonna do some lines very thinly to imply where those feathers lay. And try to do it a little bit darker so you guys can see. Oh, in fact, my ears are blue. Um, let's see, Kevin wants to know what type or brand of brushes. These brushes, I have a few different ones. This one's a Grumbacher. This one's a Princeton. Um, you know, I, I, I don't wanna endorse any brands of brushes, but um, these are just the ones that I use. I think these were a gift um, and these 
I think these were also a gift. Uh, my husband knows that I love painting, so sometimes he'll, he'll go and get me some nice brushes. Um, let's see. Okay, so now we have to do the little eyeball. Do not, my suggestion for you is to do not do your eyeball until the rest of everything is dry. The reason is it can go all over the place. Um, the, let's see. Um, Nishat wants to know what brand of watercolors. This one, the ones that I'm using, I'll show you. It looks like that. Um, they are sold out online everywhere. Apparently with the pandemic set in, um, everybody wanted to do art projects. So they're sold out right now, but you can get them at any art supply store. Um, and again, you know, there's so many different brands that are great. That's what I'm using right now. It's a travel set that I got. Um, because it's nice and small and compact and it kind of works for what I'm teaching you guys. Um, okay, so when you're doing your eyeball, um, you're gonna do a little circle and you'll notice you want to leave a little bit of white space for the gleam on the eye. Um, and Paula, it's okay. You can totally use the cheap plastic ones. I also have a lot of cheap plastic ones. Um, and that's a great way to start because again, just start, just do your art with whatever you've got. Um, and that way you won't get frustrated, right? Um, okay, so here we go. We're gonna do a little tiny circle. I'm going to use some black. I'm going to have a paper towel ready in case stuff goes sideways. <laughs> Um, because you can pick up a uh, watercolor once it's been laid down. It's a, it's a little hard. I think I've shown you all, if you want a good example of how to pick up uh, paint that you don't want there, um, go look at the Flamingo video. Um, and I, I, did, um, I did an example there. If I have time here in a second, I'll show you again. Okay, I'm gonna put a little bit of tiny black right here on the tip of my brush. And I am going to um, this is the best way that I've found to do it. You don't have to do it the same way. I'm gonna use little dots to make a teeny tiny circle. Okay, so right now, see it's just a teeny tiny dot. And I'm gonna keep filling in until I get an eyeball. I am leaving a little bit of white space for the little gleam on the eyeball. There we go. And I'm done. And then I have to set it down and walk away. Because if I mess with those little eyeballs <laughs> enough, which I will, um, eventually you'll get a, a big giant eyeball, which is not what you want. Okay, so for the most part, my little bird is done. Um, I'm trying to think. When he's more dry, I will probably get a little bit of hot pink and bring his beak closer to his face. I think his face is dry now, so I can do that. There's that. Um, what else? Oh, I forgot to show. There is going to be a big announcement tomorrow on our page. So definitely tune in for that. It's a big secret, so I can't tell you. But we will have an announcement. Okay, always remember to sign your work. I'm going to sign mine. Ta da. Um, and I think I mention this every week, but the reason that I do my paintings on uh, watercolor paper and I cut it to a four by six size is because, um, so you can uh, mail it to a friend who needs a little pick-me-up, so that's what I did. Um, okay, this guy is done. So if you want to stick around, I'm gonna do some, I'm gonna finish up our little drawing here. Um, or actually, I'm gonna show you how to do the drawing with markers, um, because you don't do layering, you just kinda do the shapes. Um, but if not, your painting is done, please send it to me, I would love to see it. Um, and I'm gonna draw, I'm gonna draw a little hummingbird with a marker real quick. Um, thank you guys for tuning in who have tuned in. I'm gonna do this one pretty quick because I need it to be able to fit on Instagram and they have a time limit. So even if you're doing with markers, I would do an outline first with pencil. Um, please remember to like and share and I will see you next week to make blueberries. Okay, I'm gonna do my little oval. I'm gonna do my rounded triangles. Okay, so if I'm doing
I'm going to use uh, red right here for his little throat. And do sort of lines that uh, get smaller as I go to the left. So this one's the longest, and then it's going to get smaller in a triangle shape. I'm going to use a little green for his head. And I'm going to leave a little white space right there. And then I'm just going to fill in here. And do a little eyeball. Ooh, my marker's not cooperating. There we go. And then I will fill in. I'll put a few brush strokes back there. I'm going to leave a little white line to show the difference between the two wings. And I'm done. Okay, guys, so that's how to draw and paint a hummingbird. Um, go ahead and send whatever you want to me. I would love to see everything that you created. Please give us a like and a share, and I will see you guys back here um, next Monday for blueberries. You guys take care.